Okay, so in the last video we talked about how to add vectors and I promised you more of adding vectors and that's what I'm going to give you. So let's talk about adding vectors that aren't parallel. Um, most specifically adding vectors that are perpendicular to each other. It's a little bit more difficult, it's a little bit more involved, so I'd like to take our time and take it slow. Um, the vectors we're going to be adding for the most part will be acceleration vectors and velocity vectors. So we're going to be adding those two types of vectors primarily, so keep that in mind as we're going forward. The method that I taught you last time is tail to tip. And this is where you move one vector, and it doesn't matter which one, because again, all the vectors are the same and we'd end up with the same result in anyway, which we'll see in class. But just remember that you move the tail of one vector to the tip of the other. And the tail is where it begins, and the tip is the arrow. So move one vector, so it starts where the other ended. So for example, if I have two vectors, one going in this direction and another going in this direction, then to add them together, what I would do is I would take, we'll call this vector A, we'll call this vector B. What I would do is I would take vector B, I'd move its tail to the tip of vector A. And the direction has to stay the same and the magnitude has to stay the same, but we can move the vector anywhere we want. So I move vector A to vector B, or vector B to vector A. So this is B. I tried to make it the same length. It would be easier if I had graph paper, um, and we'll do that in just a bit. But for right now, see that this vector, this is our resultant. We'll call it C. This is our resulting vector. So if I were on a plane and I were going in this direction and the wind were blowing in this direction, this would be my actual course. Right? I would be blown off course by that much, considering that these are the two of the same kind of vectors. Um, the other method, which other teachers here at uh, TA use, and, and I like, but I don't like as much as the, as the tip to tail method, is the parallelogram method. And the parallelogram method is pretty simple. It's just like the tip-to-tail method, except that before you add this vector here, you recreate B on both sides so that they're exactly parallel. And these two are actually the same vector, because the only thing that matters to be a vector is the magnitude, and notice that these two lengths are the same, and the direction, and notice that the two directions are the same. So these two vectors are actually the same. We can put them anywhere we want. We can make as many of them as we want. It doesn't matter, so long as the direction and the magnitude of every one is the same. Now, so this is vector 1b, and this is vector 2b, and this is vector 1a, and this is vector 2a. And the resulting vector is we go from the start of all of the vectors to where, so where the, where the tails meet to where the tips meet. This is the parallelogram method. And I don't actually care which method you use, so long as that you're using the method right, so long as you're using and getting the correct uh, resulting vector. So these are our two different ways in order to, uh, two different ways in which we can find the resulting vector, or the two different ways that we can add these vectors together. I'm going to give you guys some examples now. Okay, so for the first couple of um, resulting vectors, for the first couple of examples, we're going to be finding resultants that don't really have a value, not one that we could find easily. I mean, one that we could find eventually, but not one that we could find easily. Then we're going to move on to, to adding parallel vectors, which is much, much easier. So for the first example, let's take a vector here and add it to a vector over here. 
Notice that these two uh, have the same magnitude, but they're different directions. That makes them two different vectors. We'll name this one A, and we'll name this one B. And then I want to find the resulting vector between A and B, and we'll call the resultant C. So this is what I'm really trying to find. What is A plus B? And I can move these vectors anywhere. So let's use the tip. The tail to tip method. And I'm going to again move A to B. It doesn't matter which vectors I move because it doesn't matter as long as they're the same direction, the same magnitude. So here, uh, this is over to, up to. So this is starting here. Tail to tip. Over 2, 1, 2 in the positive direction, up to 1, 2 in the positive direction. So this is vector B, this is vector A, and our resulting vector will be where we started to where we finished. Our resulting vector is this here. So this would be our C. I'll give you one more example using the parallelogram method. I have a really long and tall vector here. Easier for us. I'm talking to myself. You guys don't have to worry about what I just said. This is vector A. This will be vector B. And to add them together, I'll move one to the other, but we're going to use the parallelogram method. So let's use, I'm going to make sure that my tip actually lines up right. We're going to move B over to A. So that's one, two, three. One, two, three. There is my first B. One, two, three. Here is my second B, B2. One. This is A1, and to get our final vector, um, we go up in this direction, right, because A is in this direction, my second A has to be in the same direction. Make this a parallelogram, so this is A1, put that on the outside, this is A2, and our resulting vector um, would be where we started, here to where we ended, up here, and this will be our resultant there. So that is vector C. These are just a couple of ways that we can add vectors that are not perpendicular and that are not parallel, and I, I'm not going to ever ask you for what the value of C is, unless the vectors are parallel or the vectors are perpendicular. Let's do one example of a perpendicular vector and we'll do a lot more in class so that you guys have some good practice. Let's say that Porter was pushing that cart with 50 newtons, one, two, three, four, five, 50 newtons of force in this direction. And I came along and I crashed into the cart with 30 newtons of force in this direction. If you can imagine it, I would be pushing. Carter would be. Or Porter would be pushing the cart. Carter. Porter would be pushing the cart, and then I would come crashing into it. And the result. So he's pushing it this way, and then I come this way, and the cart would actually go off in this direction. Maybe I'll take a video of it when when I've got some people around and and add it in here. But for right now, let's just take a look, and we'll add it tip to tail, or tail to tip rather. I'm going to move. We'll call this vector P, and we'll call this vector T. And what we're looking for is vector P plus vector T equals vector A, or awesome. I'm moving vector T upward. That's one, two, three. Um, that's 30 newtons in the positive direction. Oh, let's make this actually just to make the math easier on me because I'm in that way. We'll say that this is 40 newtons. So Porter has 40 newtons, I have 30 newtons, and the resulting vector, we go from the start of all of the vectors to the end, the very end of that vector, is that. 
Now, that looks like something that you guys should have seen in geometry, right? A right triangle. With a right triangle, we can use Pythagorean's theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where a and b are two sides of the triangle and c is the hypotenuse of the triangle. We can use that same method to actually solve how much force was exerted on that cart in this direction for resultant A. Awesome. Okay, so let's do it right now. Um, and the reason why I changed this is so that these numbers would work out so easily. We'll use this vector here, 40 squared plus 30 squared equals something squared. 40 squared is 1600 plus 900 equals c squared. These two added together are 2500 equals c squared. Because we don't want c squared, we just want c. We're going to take the square root. Take the square root of both sides. Take the square root. This ends up as 50 newtons of force equals c. We can use Pythagorean's theorem any time we have two vectors that are perpendicular to each other. So if we're going to add these two vectors, we can actually find A, big A for awesome, not little a for one of these sides. We can use Pythagorean's theorem to solve for A. We're going to get a lot of practice doing this in class, so I'm not too worried if you guys are still a little bit lost. Just know that we can actually solve for that value, and that will matter a little bit later. All right, see you next class.